this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. Kitchen time, and this is a project plant, so filmed in isolation. And this will be a coffee job. This is a trifle worrying because I don't want to lose the plant, but I've been waiting for a new set of roots to be produced. And um, the longest is a, is a good inch, over an inch now. There's, there's four I can see. Um, I'd like to end up with still having four by the end of this session. They're precious, very precious. Um, this is wired in. As far as I can see, there is only one piece of wire. So if I cut that in the pot, I should be able to just lift it out. Um, I will actually try and tease that wire out. It's, <laughs> it's nowhere near those new roots, so I can risk it. tease it out and bend it back. I'll worry about taking it off in a minute. I don't know whether I can get at the next bit. Sort of quite low down. I might be able to pull it out of the hole. That would be a better idea. This was wired in with very thin wire so it has a lot of flex yeah, a lot of flexibility. Now the other piece will probably come out the same way. I wouldn't be able to do that with thicker wire, but um, at this particular time, there wasn't much of a plant when it was potted, so uh, <laughs> it didn't need a load of strapping. But, uh, come on, out you come. If I don't get it out now, I've cut it, I'll only end up catching my finger on it or something dodgy. Now, I have noticed closer inspection as usual. Um, we do have some little bits of root growth here. And I, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that root out. It's not actually attached, but it could still be attached down the inside of the pot. We can just hope. But the most important thing is not to damage the ones I've got. That root is lifting through the hole. It looks like it will come out. Yes. Oh goody. There aren't many roots on this plant. They're a bit precious. And luckily there aren't too many left in the pot. pseudo bulb in there. Right, and we have a rotten part to the uh, rhizo that's just falling off and um, I need to cut it but I'm not sure where. Now it's a shame that these two large old pseudo bulbs but the eye there is gone, it's rotted there's no sign of anything that's liable to grow there. That one's gone. So there's no point in keeping that part, but I'm going to need the big stuff to cut that rhizo. Oh. Unfortunately, that isn't sterilised, so we'll just uh, talk amongst yourselves while that uh, has a sit in the alcohol for a minute or two. Um, so what we've got are some old roots that nonetheless are firm. And I mean, if you look at that root, it looks awful, and yet the bottom of it is starting to grow. Now, if this had a good root system, I'd just chop that off and wouldn't worry about it. But it has so few roots that they're all precious. Now, some of those are gonna come off, unfortunately, when I cut the rhizome, but this one won't, the, the one with the little bit of growth on, yeah? This one's lost its growing tip, but it's live. Yeah, so if it goes in the pot, it may well branch. And what I'll do is I'll just trim that back until I see green. And once I see green, I know I'm into a live root. And this one, well, that one's soft. Yeah, but it's firm here. So again, I can trim that one back. Um, but I don't want to start trimming until I've cut the rhizome. <coughs> Right, now the pyromaniac will come out in me now because the, uh, although the um, rubbing alcohol will sterilise it once it evaporates quickly, the way to get it to evaporate really quickly is set fire to it. Making sure there is nothing flammable anywhere near it, of course. What we don't want is the fire brigade trying to put the house out. 
So by flaming it, you guarantee you've really done the job properly. Now I'm not going near any other orchid, and then in my case you make sure it's not boiling hot. If you can touch it, it's not hot. And if you go, ouch, 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 it is hot. That's reasonably obvious, I'd have thought. And I'm going to take that off there. Now this plant had Fusarium. It's grown out of it. No sign of pink left. Yeah, we have a clean rhizome and it's green and it's healthy. This is the older part of the plant. That's where it would have had the Fusarium and it got treated and it grew on from this point after treatment. Now, I know somebody's gonna say, if you put that there, no. It's an infected part of the plant the roots are gone and there's signs of rot. You're for the bin, mate. This is the bit we're interested in. This is the bit we want to get going. So, uh, we have a few more pyrotechnics while we sort my scissors out. It's quite important if there's um, any hint of um, Fusarium that you don't spread it around the rest of the plant yourself by cutting an old part and then cutting into a new part without sterilising. Well, I'm pretty confident now that the part we're working with is actually clean. Not too hot. <laughs> I know you're going to say you've got your fingers all over it now. I don't think my fingers have got Fusarium. Sometimes we can worry a bit too much. Now, what have we got? Each root is precious. <coughs> No green yet. Go back a bit more. Now we've got green tissue. Yeah, that's all I'm after. This one feels very soggy. Ah, there's a little bit of green. Worth a risk. Worth hanging on to it. Now we've got a great big one. See that this bark is attached. If I try and tease that bark off, I could do damage. Um, now this root, yeah, the bottom part of that looks gone, so we'll go back to where it had a kink in it. Yeah, we've got green now. Now this bit, I don't care that the top doesn't look too good, it has got a growing tip on it. So I'm hoping that will just tuck round in the pot like that, so that the growing tip's in something. And then we've got this big long one which has got a dead end. So we'll come back a bit. Yep, now we're into green stuff. So that's all the trimming I need to do. Uh, while I'm there, just carefully make sure oh, I can't really get at those sheaths without endangering the roots. I don't want to damage those roots. Quite honestly, there's there's no sign of scale there. That's what I'm after. I don't want to give it off, get it off to a bad start. Now we already have what looks like the next eye on top of this new growth. So that looks like the eye that's going to push. So that's got to sit nicely on top of the media. Now, luckily, I thought ahead and I've done this dry. So um, although I have a bit of mess. I can just go and tuck that in the bin. Because we've got dry mess, which is workable. Right, so that's our piece. Now, I'm just go and get rid of this. Now, these pieces have not been potted up that long. I've got a few pieces of root stuck to the inside. If this had a different plant in it, I'd seriously think about sterilising the whole pot. But quite honestly, there's no point. Not in this case. So we want some large bark in there. I'll just have a quick look and make sure we haven't got any bits of wood. Um, we have. Too 
bad. That'll do. All right. A real flaky bit there, look. <laughs> That'll do. Flaky. I don't think there's too much in here. Right. In there then. Actually, that's too much. I've got some dangly roots that I don't want to bend. So we'll start off with quite a little bit. And I think we ought to put a piece of wire in there prior to getting it in. Because if I start waggling that around, trying to get the wire in place, it jeopardises those new roots. So all the awkward bits first. Now I haven't got a clue how this is going to work until I've finished. These holy clay pots have got one major flaw. They've only got three holes, yeah? So wherever you put a wire between two holes, you've only got a third of the pot instead of going right across the middle of the pot. If they had four, it would be better. But um, those are designed to put hangers on, you know, to put pieces of wire in to hang it. They're not designed to hold things in. Um, I, they're not necessarily designed for orchids. Um, necessarily, they came from a garden centre. So uh, Anyway, I'll put a piece of wire through and we'll sort out where the other end is going to go in a minute. Let me just get one end in, one end in and get it secure and then get it out of the way. And then I'll look to see if it can go in one of the smaller holes depending on where, where this ends up. And I think quite honestly, if that goes sort of like that with the back of the plant that's not gonna grow, that wire can go right over the center of the rhizome and still go through one of these holes. But I don't wanna do it now. I wanna get the bark in first. So this is the nuisance one, but it's got a growing tip, yeah? So I just wanna gently place that on top of the media Make sure everything's sitting nicely without being bent. And I, I can have this quite high on the pot and then just gently put the bark in. If I've got a couple of air holes with a catlia, it's not, not the end of the world. But with so few roots, there won't be any air gaps. It'll just naturally fall down in and get into all the little gaps between the roots without waggling it around where those new roots are and I'm stopping early. And there's a good reason for that because where those new roots are, I'm gonna put some small bark with a little bit of moss, which I wouldn't normally do with a cattleya, um, but I will in this particular case. I'm just trying to get some of the larger pieces in under the rhizome where there aren't any new roots. That'll help hold it in place. So we've got room for it to grow. Where's that eye? The eyes round this side. So it's got room for it to grow. It's got room to grow several new growths if it wishes to. Now that will probably, yeah, I was just going to say that will probably hold itself up now. When I pull that wire over the top, it's going to push those new roots down into the media. So I want to get all of the media in place first so that when I pull on that wire, it doesn't pull the plant down too much. And as I said, I'm just going to add a, some small bark with some moss just round the base where those new roots are. It's only going to be a small amount, but it's just, you know, near those new roots so that they stay hydrated. And that way they should grow on quicker. Um, I mean, this the wet-dry cycle that this would naturally get would mean that those new roots would stay dry for a couple of days at this time of year. Well, I'd like them to actually not only start growing, but continue to grow. So that's why they're going to get a little bit of help. I'm just get a bit of moss around near the base and put a little bit of small bark over the top. When I water it, it will take the moss and the small bark into those gaps where those new roots are. <clears throat> a 
even if it takes off like a little rocket, I can always tease that moss out if I think it's necessary, which I don't think it will be. It's only on the surface. Right, now comes the dodgy bit, trying to get that wire in place. Now I'm hoping that the wire's gonna go there. I'm just pressing gently and that appears to hold it quite firm. So now all we've got to do is get it to thread through that tiny little hole. Now come on, play ball. Don't mess me about. Don't waggle things around with those new roots. Of course I think I've got a hole that's bunged. Oh no, just it's just gone through. Right. <coughs> I'm gently holding the plant with my thumb to stop it moving too much if I can. It's not the easiest of things to do. Thread this wire through gently a bit at a time. No sudden movements. <laughs> Far too much, but <sighs> little short pieces of wire do go back in the drawer. They, they do find a use now and again. Right, so I'm just coming down onto the rhizome now, so now we be careful. But I still need it to be held firm. I think that's got it. Just a little bit of a tiny little tug with the pliers. Watching what I'm doing, not just doing it blind. And that's it. Give that a kink. And we can snip that off. Tuck the pointy end over the top. <clears throat> That's quite firm. I wouldn't say it's rigid, but it's quite firm. Now I can just tuck a little bit more moss in round the base. It's dry moss at the moment, but it's about to get watered. It was due to be watered, I just decided to repot it. And then what I'm just going to do is take the moss off where it's not required because it'll only get washed down in there and then I end up with a socky bit. I only want that moss around that new bit. There we go. <coughs> That's it. <coughs> now hopefully those new roots will get going. I know they're not damaged. You can hear them go quite honestly in a silent place like this where the only noise is me rabbiting. If one of those roots broke, you'd hear the click. It's a horrible sound, especially if you've only got one or two. Because you just think, you know, well, oh, I had two good roots, now I've only got one. Um, anyway, that's it, that's, that's it done. And then we'll, uh, hopefully, those roots with that little bit of extra hydration in some media, instead of hanging in the air, will get going now. And this root system is capable of branching. So, uh, a good soak now. We'll put that one back under the sh that This actually lives, um, this one, not the other one, the same, because it's not growing at the moment. But this one's been living under the one of the small grow lights, so it get, it's getting some extra light. Um, you know, it's getting its day length extended a bit. And hopefully now, those roots will settle in, possibly branch. And down the road, I would expect to see some coming out the holes. That's what most of the other catliers have done. Some of them have grown more roots outside of the pot than they have inside. So be it. But we'll see how that one does. There's no tag on this because it's it's just a catlier hybrid. And I know what it is. I, you know, just have a tag saying catlier hybrid. Um, I'll put the pop-up of the bloom up. If you want, you can play What's My Plant Called? Many have tried and many get close, but you re when you're looking at Cattleya hybrids, it's not a species. If it is a species, I'd be very surprised. And if it is a species, it's some sort of alba or semi-alba form because it doesn't match any species. Don't trust me, I've done that. But um, what you're looking at, if you want to try and match up with a Cattleya hybrid, is the exact shape of the bloom. It's not just the colours, it's the shape. And this bloom is unusual. It's got a very long lip and the patterning is, is, is quite unique and the coloration on that lip. <clears throat> and the two petals are large. They're almost like 
bear's ears and they're so large that they virtually cover the sepals. So when you look at this bloom you see the lip and the two petals and not much else. That's quite a distinctive shape. Yeah? And they're huge. From the top of those two petals to the bottom of the lip is about six inches. These are very large blooms. So if you want to go away and see, see if you can find, as I said, we've, I've done this twice before in its history and I've had so many ideas and then when you go and look on the internet and look, look those plants up and you think, yeah, it's close, but it's not that close or it's quite close, but not quite right. Nobody's ever found it. I don't ever expect to get a proper name for it, quite honestly. Especially when you start looking into semi-alba and alba forms of a species crossed with a hybrid. You're just not going to get there, quite honestly. But if you want to play, go ahead. <laughs> I've got better things to do. I have tried and I've left it. But if somebody can get it spot on, I would be over the moon. But I doubt it. Anyway, that's that one done, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now. That will go in the um, Project Orchids folder, this video. Uh, sorry, playlist, separate playlist, Project Orchids. And that one will get tucked in there, as it is one of our project plants. Everything I do to a project plant, whether it's a repot, trimming, anything, will always be filmed and always put in that playlist. Plus, when we get towards the end of January, we will be doing our first progress updates, where I'll go through the whole of the project plants again. And we'll have a look back how they were when I first filmed them, the benchmark videos, and how they are now, even though it's only about a six week gap in the middle of winter. I'll probably be doing that towards the end of January or beginning of February. But we'll see how we go. See you next time. Bye for now.